Hello, and welcome to OPA on AWS. My name is Zahi Ben Shabbat. I'm a prototype architect at AWS. Today, we will talk about platform engineering and OPA on AWS. This is the second chapter, platform engineering. When we start to think about designing and developing a platform, we need to aggregate the requirements of all the development teams in our organization. Then, we need to make sure those requirements are compatible with the security tooling and standards that are available. We also want to come up with a design that will support future requirements and technologies so it, that we can easily extend the platform. It is important to delegate ownership to the teams so that they can own and operate their infrastructure and applications. We also want to ensure observability across the entire organization and be able to enforce security operation when needed. An example of the previous concept for a particular team. This process is iterative across multiple teams and the job of the platform engineers is to create the Lego blocks that will allow to build a customized experience for each team in the organization. OPA and AWS provide a few out-of-the-box entities that can be used as a starting point building your developer platform. Environment Provider is where we can deploy applications under the same cluster and network. A provider exists in a particular account and region, but you can also still have multiple providers in the same account and region. By definition, providers separate the access between all resources from one provider to another. If we look at our platform and we go to providers, we can see we have quite a few, but let's try to create one and see what's the process. The first thing you may notice that creating a provider, we have actually different types of provider. So we can choose a serverless or ECS they may be the same, but there is some differences between them. If you pick up one of them, the first thing we have been asked is the name of this provider. This is usually it could fit an organization unit or some kind of segmentation between the org. If we take, for example, payments, development, provider, we usually want to give that provider an association to what is going to be used in, a, in the environment eventually. So this could be a dev provider. This will also go along with a particular set of accounts or region you want to utilize for dev testing or production. Then we have the prefix. The prefix can go under the same um, namespace of where this provider may belong to. So this could belong to payments. Then we can create a description, payment, provider, or developer. Next comes where we want to assign the group. These groups are coming from the identity provider. In this case, it's Okta. But if you were to change the identity provider to Active Directory or any other backstage supported identity providers, the groups that are exist will propagate all the way here. So we choose the developer group. Then we need to provide the AWS account number of which this provider will get deployed. You can put an account number here. Then we'll have to select the region where we want this provider to be created. You can choose any of the regions available in AWS. The environment role ARN relates to the role that has sufficient access in order to provision this environment. This role we try to be assumed by the pipeline and execute this template. You have to make sure that that pipeline role have access to assume that role and that that role that you provide actually have for sufficient permission to create the infrastructure of that particular provider. Lastly, we'll provide the repo of this provider. Again, these are all preserved in a separate group in GitLab, so you can separate the access, but nonetheless, you want to keep a good naming convention for this provider. So you can call it payment development, 
And once we trigger this, we'll essentially end up with an entity that looks like this. And if we scroll right here, you can see all the information about this provider, including the resources that I created for it. You may notice that these are uh, SSM parameter where the actual information exists of this uh, provider. But if you want to, you can actually look at the entity and see additional information. You can also jump into the provider information to the catalog itself, go into GitLab and see the IAC that actually created this provider. And you, if you look at the pipeline, you will see the pipeline that actually ran and created this provider. Once the provider is associated with an environment, we will see this relationship. But initially, the provider will only be owned by the team, but that we will discuss on the next part. An environment is an abstracted entity in the platform, but not in AWS. Environment allow to define the type of the environment, classification, hierarchy, and category regardless to which provider is used behind the scene. The relationship between a provider to environment is one to many, thus allowing automatic deployment of an application to two providers at the same time. An example of that is deploying an app to two regions. The environment information is propagated into the application and the resource pipelines. The pipeline can use that information for a customized automation. We used required approval option in the environment to decide if the pipeline should run automatically or should it require an approval with an authorized entity. This will be demonstrated later in the pipeline and automation chapter. So this time we'll go to environments and we can see these environments that exist in this case, and you can see it development, testing, private, public, internal, all these definitions. But let's create one and see what's the process to create an environment. So when we create an environment, we first have to provide a name. So we can call this payment production. The short name could be prod, payment prod. Production environment. Payment. In this case, we know this particular environment is going to be ECS, uh, but we can choose another one if you create a provider of Kubernetes or serverless. This is important because this is a production environment, we would want to select yes which will halt the automatic pipeline until an approval is granted. This is effective because we wouldn't want automatic changes developer are pushed to be propagating all the way to production. You can also enforce this in lower environments such as testing of staging, not only production. The owner of this, again, is a developer team or any, any team that you would like. Um, you can choose here a single account or multi-account that helps with obs observability when you look at a complete view of all the environment. Same goes for region, whether it's a single region or multi-region. And of course, the category here in this case will be production. This category list could be changed if you have different types of environments. Since this is a private one, we'll keep it as private, but you can select internal or public. And for the system, we're gonna keep it under payment system. This could be used for further um, integration with Backstage. Now, the hierarchy help us with the deployment to other environments, which we'll again, we'll cover in our next uh, episodes, but hierarchy essentially allows to go from lower to higher environment when we deploy an app to another environment. Since this is prod, we want to put a high number, something like 10. But the actual number could be any, any number that you wish. Now it asks us which provider would you like to create so we can choose one of the providers that we would like to use. Yeah, of course, the payment provider. 
Lastly, we provided her environment repo name. Again, all the environments separate group in GitLab. So you still want to keep a good naming convention. So payment, fraud, ENV. And if we go ahead and create this one, now we can immediately go to the catalog and see the environment that we have created. You can see the association with the provider we have selected is also created. If we scroll a little bit to the bottom, we can see all the configuration we have selected. And this allows us to add more providers uh, to that environment if we wish to do it. Bear in mind, this additional provider is not retroactive. So if you have deployed in applications or resources to this environment, Adding provider in a later time will not automatically create the apps and resources in that additional provider. While we create AWS resources in different shapes and forms, we distinguish the resources for an application to shared resources. Application resources are resources that are required for application to run, for example, ECS task or ECR repository. This may also include secrets and SSM parameters. We provide several examples or templates for application resources in CDK and Terraform. Shared resources are individual resources that are created in the environment with the intention to be shared across multiple applications. Implementing a shared resource also required to implement a policy update automation in order to apply future application roles to be granted to use this resource. We provide an AWS RDS resource template with a policy update automation example. Now, in the application, we can go and create an app. We can choose any of the app. So this is an example of an application that has baked in code to interact with RDS database. Same way as before, we can give an app name, a description, an owner group, and the particular environment we want to use it. We can also use the environment we have created before. This run pretty quick, but remember that behind this, there is a pipeline that needs to run to actually create those resources so it may take a while until we actually see the resources available. If you go to the application, you will see a temporary screen until the rest of the tabs are populated once the pipeline is complete. The process to create a resource is similar. We go ahead and create AWS component, but this time we're gonna select the resources AWS RDS database. In this case, we'll provide a database name. We call it AMSDB a database, payments, applications. And we can choose a owner group. And again, selecting the environment. And lastly, we can choose uh, a name for the actual database, not for the entity. So we can choose payment and we can choose the type of the database uh, and the size of it as well. And Again, this is another uh, group in uh, GitLab, so they all separate between apps, resources, uh, providers, and environment. So we can call this one payment MSDB. And again, same as before, we'll create it quickly, and then the infrastructure code will run in the pipeline and actually provision our database. Thank you for watching. We will see you on the next episode.